Okay, welcome to this proof of concept video. So today I want to show you an example encryption and decryption for the ADF GVX cipher. So we'll explain how the cipher works via an example. Okay, so um, the first uh, special tool which is used in setting up the cipher is uh, called a Polybius square. And what it is is it's this table. I've labeled the columns and rows by the letters A, D, F, G, V, X. Those are chosen so because they're distinct in Morse code. They're hard to mix up in Morse code. Um, okay, and now what I want to do is, since there's six columns and six rows, there are 36 entries in this table, and I want to populate them with the 26 letters of the alphabet plus the 10 digits that you might need um, when sending a message. So one slick trick for populating this table um, so that you can explain to somebody else how to populate it without writing out the entire table is the following. So you pick a message like, hi mom, I love you. And then you write that message left to right, top to bottom into the table. Except if you see any repeat letters, you leave them out because we don't want any letters repeated inside the table. We want one of each letter and digit. So um, that's what's left of the message, hi mom, I love you, if I take out the repeat letters. And then I continue with the alphabet in alphabetical order. But of course, um, I go A, B, C, D, but then E has already appeared, so I can't include that again. So I continue with F and so on and so forth, and then the digits. Okay, so this is one uh, way to fill out this table. This table information forms the first part of the key to the cipher. And, um, and so this is one way to fill it out. So you could send the key as, hi mom, I love you. And then somebody could do this process, or you could just send the whole table as the key. Okay, that's only one part of the key. That's called a Polybius square. Um, this actually, this concept dates to ancient Greece when um, you might want to send messages, say, by uh, lighted torches um, at the top of a hill so that somebody very far away could see them. And you wouldn't want to have a lot of characters in your alphabet when you're sending a message like that. Maybe you could light one, two, three, four, five, or six torches, and that could be visible. But you don't want to have somebody to be able to tell whether it's 25 torches or 26 torches. So, um, so this is a way of reducing the alphabet. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to replace each letter in the table with its coordinates um, in terms of the, the, the rows and columns. Okay. But we'll do that in a moment. Um, okay, the other part of the column key, uh, the key is called the column key. And this one over here, um, basically you have a series of columns, which you have to have um, some permutation of. So one way of indicating a permutation is to write out the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six in some order. So here they are on the, on the left, I've picked some ordering. You could take a, a word and you could um, reorder the letters according to alphabetical order, and that would also give a permutation of some kind. So that would be another way of sending a permutation as part of the key. So basically, this is the information that, is, that forms the key for the cipher, and this is the information that both the sender and receiver have to have and have to keep secret in order to communicate using the cipher. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to encrypt a plain text message. So let's suppose our plain text is Y, uh, sorry, is U, C, but you do, do not observe. Um, okay, so if that's our message, what we're going to do is uh, an encryption character by character, and it actually comes in two stages. So the first stage, I'm going to take each letter. So here I take the Y, I look it up in the Polybius square, and I see that its coordinates are D, D. So I write the D, D down below. So one letter turns into two letters. Okay, uh, here O is A, G. So notice I'm taking row, column as the ordering of my coordinates. And then I continue the process. So U, for example, would be D, F, um, and S here will be G, G, and so on all the way through. Now this is not the ciphertext. This wouldn't be a very secure cipher if we stopped here because it would be just um, some form of substitution cipher. Um, and so you could maybe use a frequency analysis on something like this, um, kind of like you do in the cryptogram puzzles in the newspaper. So we don't want to do, um, leave it here, we want to keep going. So now we can use the second part of our key. There's a second step to get to the ciphertext. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the result of step one and I'm going to write it um, under the column key from left to right, top to bottom, okay? And, uh, and then once I've got that, I've got six columns of letters here because my column key was six columns long. It could be different columns in practice in the war. It was like... 20, 24 columns. Um, okay, so now I've got uh, the letters written out like this, 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to read them in the order indicated by the column. So first I'm going to read column one and I'm going to read them top to bottom. So I'll, my ciphertext now starts D, G, V, D, etc. Okay, and then I put the second column into the ciphertext and so on and so forth. And that's how you get the ciphertext for the ADF GVX cipher. All right, so now what if you only had the ciphertext? How would you decrypt? Well, you'd have to have the key. Both sender and receiver have the key. So you just have to undo the process that we did. So take a moment right now in the video and just um, pause and think about what it means to undo the process. What do you actually need to do? Okay, well, so step one is you're going to fill the columns um, in according to uh, the ciphertext. You're going to have to check how long the ciphertext is to figure out how long the columns are. So that's a slight uh, hitch there. But anyway, we'll write them into the columns, chunk by chunk. Okay, and now we can read them off row by row. All right, so now we've undone the second of the two steps. Now we can use the Polybius square to pull out the, uh, the actual plain text. So for example, the DD, look up those coordinates in the table and you see Y and that's the first plain text letter. Then you look up AG and you see an O and that's the second plain text letter and so on and so forth. All right, so that's how you encrypt and decrypt with the ADF GVX cipher. Um, for fun, I'll give you a ciphertext uh, puzzle right here. So you can pause the video um, and see if using the information on the screen, which constitutes the key for this guy, you can decrypt this ciphertext. The solution will be shown on the next, uh, the next slide in the video here, so just pause right now if you don't want to see the solution, and then let it run when you do. Um, take care.